What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel Richard on Data and if this is your first time here my name is Richard and this is the channel where we talk about all things data, data science, statistics, and programming. Subscribe for all kinds of content just like this if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so YouTube notifies you whenever I upload a video. So this is going to be another video in my Julia tutorial series. In the first few videos we worked our way through getting set up in your preferred environment manipulating data and visualizing data. Well, today we're going to talk about statistics, specifically working with some of your basic summary stats, all the various distributions, as well as setting up basic statistical hypothesis tests. Now to do this, we're going to need to make use of a variety of different packages. So first and foremost, there's the statistics package, but this is actually built directly into base Julia, meaning you don't have to go through and run your package add statistics. It's already going to be built in. There's the stats base uh, package, and now the name to this is a little bit misleading because actually statistics is a package that's built into base Julia. But then the stats base package is going to provide you with some optional additional functionality on top of that. We're going to use the distributions package for all of our uh, obviously distributional needs. And then finally we're going to wrap up with hypothesis tests. Now if you've been working your way through my other tutorials, there's some other uh, packages which, I, which I'm going to bring in. Like first is the plots package. That's pretty straightforward. That's a simpler and quicker uh, package than something like Vega Lite. And then we also are going to use the random package for just some other helper functions. Before we go through all these things though, just a couple things. Number one, please smash the like button. It takes just half a second of your time and it does help my content reach a larger audience. Also, in the description of this video, I will have a link to my Patreon account, so if you guys would be willing to support me that way, it would be massively appreciated. This script is going to be, just like always, available in my GitHub repo, which will be in the description of the video. And then, similarly, I will have links to a variety of these help documentation files. They'll be in the script, as well as, like everything else, in the video description. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we're going to work through are the various distributions. And just like any uh, other random number generator type of problem, the first thing that we're going to do is set the random seed for reproducibility purposes. And now from that random package that we pulled in right up front, we have this seed function. I'm going to set the seed here to just a, just a random number 567. And then we're going to go from there we're going to simulate from some various statistical distributions. Now, what we're going to do here to do this is going is to use this rand function. So the rand function is just for uh, sampling from something. Now, how this is going to work is rand is going to take as its first uh, argument some data or a distribution object. And so the distribution object that I'm passing here is this normal distribution. The normal distribution has two arguments. That's the mean 100 and the standard deviation 10. That's going to give us a variance of 10 squared, that is 100. And then the second argument to the rand function is the number of observations. So basically all I want is 1000 observations from a normal mean equals 100, standard deviation equals 10 distribution. I'm going to use the plots library to just use this histogram function. That way I can look at my distribution of data and uh, that to me looks incredibly normal. There's obviously many more distributions that we can play with using this package. The next one I'm going to show you is the uniform distribution. So the uniform distribution has two parameters. That's the minimum, which I'm going to set to zero here, and the maximum, we're going to set to 50. Same thing where we want 1,000 observations from this distribution. We'll make a histogram of that, and again, that looks relatively uniform. Next thing that I'm going to show you is the exponential distribution. This has only one parameter and we're going to set that to, uh, to 40. Again, sample 1,000 observations from that distribution. Now, what we would expect here is um, 
a long-tailed sort of distribution because the exponential distribution is skewed to the right. That's exactly what we've got here. Now, continuous distributions are not the only distributions that we can sample from. We can also use uh, discrete distributions. So the big two that you're gonna wanna be familiar with are the binomial and the Poisson. So in this example here, what I'm gonna take is a binomial distribution with uh, n equals 30 and p equals 0.3. So just think of that as like 30 Bernoulli trials with uh, the Bernoulli parameter or probability equal to 0.3. And then we're going to repeat that entire process 1,000 times. We're gonna create a histogram of that Naturally, you would expect the mean of such a distribution to fall somewhere around 9. That's precisely what, uh, what we're getting here. Then, last thing that we're going to do is 1,000 uh, observations from a Poisson distribution with parameter equal to uh, 20. Now, in this instance, we, you would expect the mean to be somewhere around uh, 20 and to have a somewhat more asymmetric looking distribution. And once again, that's exactly what we have here. Now one last super useful functionality that I'm going to show you from the distributions package is fitting the empirical distribution to a theoretical distribution. So for those of you unfamiliar with those terms, an empirical distribution can basically just be thought of as your raw data. So if we look at our normal distribution, for example, this is not going to perfectly follow a normal mean equals 100, standard deviation equals 10 distribution because there's some degree of sampling error from that, right? And so we can take this raw data that we've simulated and then we can fit that to a theoretical distribution. So if we do that, we use this uh, fit function. We want to fit uh, to a normal distribution using our normal data, and that returns to us a normal distribution with a mean that's pretty close. It's like 99.966 and a standard deviation of 10.212. So it did a pretty good job. We can do something very similar to that with the exponential data and it returns to us uh, the theta parameter of 41.02, uh, which again is not doing too bad considering uh, the distribution I was sampling from from the first place uh, had the parameter of 40. So it's doing a pretty good job. Now that you've hopefully got the hang of all the different distributions, let's work our way through some of the statistics functions. And to do this, I'm going to use, if you've seen my last tutorial, the same data set that I used there. I'm going to use this MPG data set that comes from the ggplot2 R package. So again, that does rely on the R data sets package. But I'm going to load that in into a data set called MPG. Then if I use the describe function on that, the two variables that I'm going to focus on here, just for giving you the idea of the statistics functions, are the CTY, or city miles per gallon variable, as well as this HWY, that is highway miles per gallon. So remember up front I told you we've got two different stats packages. Those are statistics and stats base. Now, if you want to specify where the function is coming from, you can specify that package up front so we could specify statistics.mean of the city variable coming from MPG, or we could use stats base, but it really doesn't matter because you can look at the um, output that's returned here and it is exactly the same. Now, Julia is going to default to just using the statistics package. Uh, if you just call mean, so I would just recommend doing that the majority of the time because it really doesn't matter, but uh, all that to say, you can specify statistics or stats base right up front. Now, one of the helper functionalities that stats base is going to give us is allowing us to do like a weighted mean. So this mean function is going to optionally allow us to pass in a uh, vector of weights. And now there's a couple different ways that we could set this up. So if we just want weights, that add up to one, we can use the A weights function. That's going to create what's basically called an analytic weights object. It's a series of weights that are gonna add up to one. We pass that in as a second argument, and we see that the weighted mean with 10 getting a weight of 0.8, 20 and 30 getting a weight of 0.1, that's gonna to return to us 13. 
Now, similarly, if we want to define it instead as a frequency weight, and now this is just think of the, these as frequencies, so the number of times 10, 20, and 30 are occurring respectively, we could use this F weights function, which stands for frequency weights. We could set it up that way, and then similarly, we're gonna get uh, a returned output of 13. So it keeps going. You have all the, all the different functions that you might expect. We've got a median function. We've got an STD function. That stands for standard deviation, obviously. There's a variance function for returning our uh, variance. And then we've got a super useful quantile function. So first argument is going to be the vector that you want to summarize over. And then the second argument is just going to be a vector for all your different uh, quantiles that you want to return. So I want the 0, 10th percentile, 25th, 50th, 75th, 90th, and uh, 100th. And then I'm going to get all those. We got 9, 11, 14, 17, 19, 21, and 35, respectively. So super, super helpful function, just like you might expect to see uh, if you were doing statistical analysis in R. Now, before we wrap up on the statistics stuff, let's get into some of the more multivariate type of things. First and foremost, I'm going to create a scatter plot of uh, the variables city and highway. And it should come as no surprise to anybody that these two things are highly correlated, right? So if you have a high city miles per gallon, you're probably going to have a high highway miles per gallon. So these two things do look heavily correlated, but we have this COR or core function, which can give us back our correlation coefficient. So let's run that function and we get a uh, correlation of 0.96 thereabouts. And just looking at this, that uh, looks just about right to me. Now, if you want to return the covariance, you can use this COV or COV function. We do that and we get a covariance of 24.2 uh, roughly. Now, the last thing to look at is just how you sample from various data. And now there are two kind of similar functions in Julia and the statistics and stat base uh, packages for this. Those are RAND and sample. Now there is a subtle difference here. RAND is purely for independent sampling. Sample is a little bit more flexible, so we can do things that are uh, like things like sampling without replacement, which are by definition not uh, independent sampling. So I'm going to show you an example of the sample function here. I want to sample from uh, a vector that goes 1 through 50. I want to draw five items. I'm going to say replace equals false. So we're sampling without replacement here. And uh, we're going to order them. So we can specify to this argument ordered equals true. Let's do that. And we drew the five numbers 21, 29, 35, 46, and 50. Now the last thing that I'm going to show you here is going to be an example of a hypothesis test. And for this, we are using the hypothesis tests package. This is an extremely powerful package. You've got your standard parametric tests like the T, the Z, the F, and the chi-square, and you have a whole variety of non-parametric tests too. So I do strongly recommend reading the documentation just so you're aware of all the different things you can do using this package. But we're gonna work through a simple uh, example from a, just a one sample t-test using the same data that I used in my statistics tutorial on hypothesis testing. You have all your standard uh, summary statistic data that you need for setting a hypothesis test up, well, specifically a one sample t-test. We have an x-bar of 3.2, a standard deviation of 1.2, we have a sample size of 50, uh, the mu naught that we're testing against is 3.5, I'm going to create a hypothesis test object using this one sample t-test function. I'm going to feed to this function x bar, the standard deviation, n, and mu naught. Then I'm going to call that test object, and we get a whole variety of really awesome uh, output here. We get our parameter of interest here, that's the mean. Its value under the null hypothesis is 3.5. The point estimate that we arrived at through our raw data, like our x bar, was 3.2. 
Uh, the 95% confidence interval we have is 2.859 to 3.541. And now we have a two-sided hypothesis here, although you could specify that we want a left or a right-sided test. Uh, but our outcome with 95% confidence is that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the two-sided p-value that we get here is 0 0.0833. Now we have all of our uh, various testing information here, like we have 50 observations. The t-statistic that we got here was negative 1.768. Uh, we have 49 degrees of freedom, and we have an empirical standard error of 0.17, uh, basically. And now there are a variety of helper functions out there for extracting different pieces of this output. But let's just say that I wanted the left-sided uh, p-value here. I can specify tail equals left to this p-value function here, and then I'm going to get a point uh, 0, 0.0417. And in that instance, assuming we had a 5% uh, significance level, then yes, we would be rejecting the null hypothesis in this scenario. So hopefully now you see all the different things in the statistics world that you can accomplish using Julia. I haven't shown you any modeling yet because that's going to be the subject for a different tutorial, but we've walked through distributions, the statistical functionalities, as well as the hypothesis test functions. Now it is entirely possible in the future, all the stats-based functionality is just going to be merged directly into that statistics uh, package, the one that is truly part of base Julia. But as of now, these two things are very separate packages. So just be uh, familiar with that fact. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing this video. Once again, smash the like button. And then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.